This episode of Real Science is brought to you by Brilliant. Master concepts in math and science for 20% off by being one of the first 200 people to sign up at brilliant.org slash real science. At this point, no one is oblivious to the impact the novel coronavirus is having on society. Millions infected, tens of thousands dead, financial markets in ruin, people out of work, social isolation, and everyone wondering, when will this end? And this is the hardest question to answer. We are in uncharted waters. Currently, experts estimate the worst of the impact should be over in a few months. But even after this initial surge is over, there is a chance that the virus will persist in the population, coming back again and again. There is also a chance that the virus could act seasonally, recurring every winter. Scientists and, well, everyone fiercely hope that this isn't the case, but there's a possibility it just doesn't go away on its own. And even after only a few weeks, everyone can feel that this lockdown is unsustainable. If the virus does come back again next year, the prospect of shutting the world down again is devastating. There is an urgent need to find a way to prevent new infections. And because of this, the race for a vaccine is on. Right now, there are at least 35 different vaccines in preliminary stages around the world. Researchers are moving at breakneck speeds, and progress is being made ridiculously fast. And the most promising vaccines right now are ones that are very different from the traditional vaccines we all know about. This type of vaccine is called an RNA vaccine, and if successful, could revolutionize the way we prevent infectious disease. Just like normal vaccines, RNA vaccines get the body to produce antibodies which can attack potential pathogens, but they do so in a totally different way. And scientists think that this simple yet groundbreaking concept could be the way to stop coronavirus in its tracks. Vaccines are one of medicine's greatest inventions and prevent an estimated two to three million deaths every year Vaccines have eradicated smallpox, reduced global child mortality rates, and prevented countless birth defects and lifelong disabilities, such as paralysis from polio. Historically, vaccines work by introducing a weaker form of the virus to the body, or by introducing a dead form of it. These are called live attenuated vaccines and inactivated vaccines. The virus's disease-causing traits are removed before being injected into the body. When these modified versions of the pathogen are introduced to the body, the immune system recognizes the antigens that coat their surface, just as the body would in an actual infection. The immune system reacts to these antigens by making certain types of white blood cells, called T cells and B cells. T cells attack cells in the body that have already been infected, and B cells produce antibodies that attack the viral antigens. The antibodies bind with the antigens on the modified pathogens, just as they would with the disease-causing pathogens. This blocks them from infecting more cells and allows the body to destroy them. Once the vaccine pathogens are destroyed, the body is left with a supply of T and B cells that will remember how to fight that specific disease in the future. This type of vaccine can be very effective at preventing certain diseases, but the way they are manufactured means they are not always a great solution when a novel sudden outbreak like the coronavirus happens, because making these vaccines often takes a huge amount of time and resources. The seasonal flu vaccine provides a good example as to why the process is cumbersome, because the key to making it is lots and lots of eggs. Egg-based vaccine manufacturing is used to make both the inactivated vaccine, the flu shot, and the live attenuated vaccine, the nasal spray vaccine. And they have been making them this way for the last 70 years. The process begins when the candidate flu virus is injected into fertilized chicken eggs. They are then incubated for several days to allow the viruses to replicate. For inactivated influenza vaccines, the viruses are then killed and the virus antigen is purified. For live attenuated vaccines, the process is even more involved. They have to be modified to no longer be infectious to humans, but remain similar enough to the original virus to produce an immune response. This is done by allowing the virus to mutate over time inside the chick cells. It slowly becomes more adapted to infect chicken cells and less adapted to infect human cells. Then, when reintroduced to the body as a vaccine, the weakened virus multiplies less quickly in humans and gives the immune system time to mount an antibody response. But as you can expect, this process takes a long time. Production can take months, an eternity when there's a deadly virus circulating the globe. Propagating the viruses in question is also expensive and requires a massive number of eggs, 
it takes about one egg to make one vaccine. Some of the coronavirus vaccine development projects are using these more traditional approaches, but others are using newer technology to try to circumvent these problems. One company, Moderna, is leading the charge in creating an mRNA vaccine that could be the first of its type approved for human use. And the vaccine, called mRNA-1273, could become the first coronavirus vaccine available to the public. The development of the vaccine began when the entire genome of the coronavirus was sequenced in January of this year and uploaded to a public database. Scientists then identified the sequence within the genome for a key protein on the surface of the virus, called the spike protein, as a good vaccine candidate. The spike protein is a surface protein that the coronavirus uses to bind to a human cell receptor, allowing it to gain entry into the cell. It is one of the major antigens of the coronavirus that the human body can make antibodies against. The nucleic acid sequence that codes for the spike protein in the virus was then encoded into an instruction molecule, a messenger RNA. The mRNA molecule can then be replicated many times and administered to patients directly as a vaccine. The mRNA then travels throughout the body and eventually instructs some immune cells, like macrophages or dendritic cells, to make copies of the spike protein. The spike protein antigen is then displayed on the cell surface of the immune cells that have taken up the mRNA. The presence of the spike protein lets the immune system think it has been infected by the coronavirus. Immune cells then learn about the spike protein and mount an immune response against it. The immune cells that develop then remain in the body and can protect the person if they ever come in contact with the actual coronavirus. This novel approach is promising because the virus itself doesn't have to be propagated to make a vaccine. This cuts out a time-consuming process and instead uses the human body, in a sense, to manufacture its own vaccine. In contrast to the months required to make traditional vaccines, RNA vaccines can be made in the lab in approximately one week using readily available materials. And because it is relatively easy to encode mRNA with any nucleic acid sequence, variations of the vaccine can be made quickly too, using the same production methods and manufacturing facilities. This, in particular, could become vital for viruses that mutate, allowing vaccination efforts to be more nimble and adaptable to changing circumstances. A recent study used mice to test the effectiveness of RNA vaccines for a range of infectious diseases, including the Ebola virus, H1N1 influenza, and Toxoplasma gondii. They found that it was successful in fully protecting against lethal exposures to these deadly pathogens. DNA and RNA vaccines have also been used for years in veterinary medicine for diseases like rabies in dogs, foot and mouth disease in cows, and even a bronchitis caused by a different form of coronavirus in chickens. The scientific basis for the coronavirus RNA vaccine is sound. And if it can be produced so quickly, why isn't it already out there? The science of mRNA vaccines may be proven in animal models, but it will still require a lot of testing in humans before it can be released to the general public. Vaccine developers have to be very careful in developing any product that is going to be injected into potentially most of the world's population. The trials need to rule out if the vaccine could be ineffective or worse, unsafe. The main risk that researchers need to be careful to avoid is a phenomenon called disease enhancement. This is when vaccinated people who do get infected with the actual virus develop a more severe form of the disease than people who had never been vaccinated. And this does come up on occasion in clinical trials. In the 1960s, a vaccine was produced against a common respiratory virus that causes cold-like symptoms in children. In clinical trials, the vaccine was found to make the symptoms worse in infants who went on to catch the virus. And more recently, a similar thing happened to animals given an early experimental SARS vaccine. Because of risks like this, these trials have to be taken extremely seriously, and they usually take place in three phases. After a vaccine candidate has been tested in laboratory animals, phase one of the clinical trials begins, where the vaccine is first introduced into humans. This usually involves a few dozen healthy volunteers and tests the vaccine for safety. Phase two involves several hundred people, usually in a part of the world affected by the disease or in groups of people who the vaccine is intended for, and again monitors for safety and also efficacy. The third phase does the same in several thousand people. And because of this long but important process, 
vaccines usually do not get regulatory approval for 10 years or more. But for the new vaccines being developed, researchers and regulators are trying to fast track that process while also trying to not cut any corners. They acknowledge that the risk of disease enhancement is low, but the risk of not getting vaccines advanced quickly and more and more people dying is high. Moderna has broken records with how quickly they moved from obtaining the genetic sequence to developing a vaccine ready for human testing, just 42 days. Phase one of testing for the mRNA vaccine has just begun, with the first ever person being injected with the new vaccine just days ago. Some think the vaccine could be ready for regulatory approval in 18 months. That feels like ages when it seems like the world is crumbling around us, but is in fact lightning speed for this process. One of the reasons their vaccine development has been so fast is the work they've done over the past two years working to develop a vaccine against the MERS virus. So when the company received the coronavirus genomic sequence in January, the stage was already set. However, the 18-month timeline is still an optimistic one. Basically, everything has to go right in all three phases of the clinical trials to allow the vaccine to be ready for 2021. If they can pull it off, it would be a world record. But even if it takes longer, the development will be groundbreaking. mRNA vaccines are likely going to be a big part of the way we prevent infectious diseases in the future and can hopefully be a powerful tool in the toolbox in any future viral outbreak. As this situation unfolds around us, most of us are trying to stay safe, informed, and hopeful about the future, while also taking care of ourselves the best we can. Those of us with free time on our hands find ourselves wondering how we can make the most of this period. This is a great time to read the books, do the projects, and learn the skills that we've had on our to-do lists for ages. So if you're a student looking to stay on top of your studies, someone hoping to brush up on cutting-edge topics, or someone who just wants to use this time to understand the world better, you should check out the math and science learning resources on Brilliant. With Brilliant, you can add some learning structure to your daily routine by setting a goal to improve yourself and then working at that goal a little bit every day. Brilliant makes it easy with interactive challenges, graphs, and quizzes that make your learning really hands-on. Brilliant's library includes a course on computational biology if you want to dive deeper into mRNA vaccines and how they work. The course develops an intuition for a selection of foundational concepts in molecular biology, like how the structure of DNA and RNA make them such great information storage molecules, and eventually builds up to cutting-edge problems in biology, like RNA folding. So if you want to build your problem-solving skills, or just want to spend this era of free time doing something productive, then sign up for Brilliant Premium to learn something new. The interactive content is a really great way to learn, especially compared to passive lecture-style learning. And over time, you'll be amazed at what you've mastered.